Hey guys, welcome back to a new video by Biology with Zhang Quan. So today, we are going to start off the series with the IGCSE Biology 2023 to 2025 and 2026 to 2028. So this is a reduced study technique and a new series just to change the way how my old videos work so that it is more relevant, more concise and straight to the point. So we are going to start off with chapter one today, characteristics and classification of living organism. Okay, so the content of today we are going to go through is the introduction and what is new. Okay, and the second part will be the characteristics of living organism, concept and uses of classification system, features of organisms, and lastly, a summary. Okay, so the introduction today. So this is a renewed series of the previous uh, full topical IGCSE biology series that I've done. So there are key things that I would like to share in, with a newer study technique is that I would like to give a more comprehensive, comprehensive explanation with clear, concise towards the syllabus and you just need to know what is required from here and then you are good to go. So this, there will also be a mind map and then this is how I'm going to start to train you to use different study techniques to gauge not just in your secondary education but progressing towards your tertiary education. Okay, let's move on to the mind map. So today we are going to do the chapter one, okay, which we have three things, which is the characteristics of living organisms, the concepts and uses of classification systems, and the features of organisms. Okay, so what do we know about characteristics of living organisms? Characteristics means like, what do they do as an animal or as a living organism? So it's able to move, it's able to respire, is able to excrete. These are examples of characteristics that we need to know. Then, the concept and uses of classification system. There's a lot of things in classifying animals, not just by just differentiating them one by the features and everything. In a more comprehensive way, biologists have learned ways to use DNA to classify them to different kinds of species because genus and species now is the scientific name is how are we going to differentiate and their similarities accurate similarities to them and their previous ancestors okay and we're going to learn more about this and then lastly features of organisms so living organisms we have the mammals we have the five kingdoms we have the prokaryotes we have the bacteria the viruses the insects so this will be further explored in features of organism okay so let's move on to chapter 1.1 characteristics of living organisms so let's see you have learned this before mrs grant have you heard of this term yes you do so you have heard this probably in year seven or even earlier than that so what does mrs grant mean means it's the movement respiration sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. So what is a movement? Movement is an action by an organism or part of an organism causing a change of position and place. Means it's moved to somewhere. Okay, it's not just static, but it's moving. Okay, then we have a respiration. Respiration is the chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrients, molecules, and release energy for metabolism. So it is for the purpose of metabolism and giving energy. But we always think that respiration is breathing. No, this is not such thing. So you have to find out more soon why respiration is not breathing. Okay, sensitivity. Sensitivity is the ability to detect and then responds to changes in the external or external environment. Basically by stimuli. Whenever something hot touches you, you immediately create a sensitivity by moving away. Then we have growth. Growth is a permanent increase in size and dry mass. We all grow. We all grow at some certain parts and different, different moments of it. So growth is a part of a living organism. Reproduction is the processes that make more of the same kind of organism. So when you breed new children or new animals, 
they are a form of reproduction because they can replicate. Excretion. Excretion is the removal of waste product of metabolism and substance in excess of requirement. Anything that is a waste product, toxic, they will leave from our body. Okay. And lastly is nutrition. They are able to take in materials as like for their diet and then to make sure that it can function for the remaining um, characteristics. Okay. All right. Next one. Concepts and uses of classification system. Chapter 1.2. All right. So we need to know that organisms are classified into groups by the features they share. Because whenever we talk about features, right, features is like what is observed, what is observable from like a distance. You can see like, how does this animal behave differently? How does this animal move differently from another organism? So they can be classified by their features. And species, you need to know this definition. This will be asked in exam. Species are a group of organisms which can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. It means that species they are able to continuously reproduce okay and then the generation continues like that so you have to know the exact definition for species then you have a sequence of classification by the kingdom is the largest like the animalia kingdom all right then we have the phylum the classes the order the families the genus and lastly the species so the binomial system of naming species is an internationally agreed naming system in which the scientific name of an organism comprises two parts, which is genus and species. So what do we know about genus and species? Have you heard before of Homo sapiens? Homo sapiens are humans. But if you have seen how scientists write Homo sapiens is where it has a capital H and a small s. So this is the format of writing. Genus must be capitalized and the species can, must be non-capitalized. So the genus is a, yeah, all right. So they will have repeated, it's the same thing. Then the classification of organisms helps show the evolutionary relationship between them. So scientists also use the DNA base sequence to help classify organism. So this is the key thing that we talk about the current um, classification system. Unlike last time we used anatomy, morphology, now we use DNA. Why? Because DNA is accurate. DNA, we can compare how similar it is and how accurate it is from now to the past. Then they can relate because the DNA is passed down. Okay, so that is how we classify by their evolutionary relationship, means it's their ancestors. Then the similarity of a DNA chain show how closely two related other organisms are. So in the end, this is how we differentiate, how we compare. Okay, Dishotomous keys. Dishotomous keys are visible features to classify organisms. They give you two choices of two features, maybe it can be more, or follow the one that applies. Each option leads to another option until the organism is narrowed down to its genus and species. So sometimes they can give you, this is found in paper two or the multiple choice question or paper four in the structured question. So you can see the difference is that um, they always give you some features. Then if you see the features are correct, it's usually very easy to spot. Then you move on to the second one, then to the third one. Then you find out which is the most best suitable answer. And then if it's uh, for the paper four or the structured answer question, they will give you all these kinds of pictures and ask you to compare by the uh, features that they have. Okay, so the next one is the features of organisms, chapter 1.3. So the features of organism, you have the five kingdoms here. Five kingdoms, you have the animals, plants, fungi, prokaryotes, prototics, and these are like the five. Lah. So what do you have to know here? Just know that and you just need to know what are animals really. Animals can be like cat, ladybird, newt. Plants it could be anything, cactus, oak tree, any common plants that we see. Fungi is a type of mushroom. But of course, again, uh, they can spread spores and then like yeast and mushrooms are one few examples. Prokaryotes, in a way, is bacteria. Okay, so like salmonella, E. coli, um, pro uh, prokaryotes. And protocysts. Protocysts are single cell organisms with a nucleus such as amoeba. Okay, 
So all animals in general are multicellular. It contains a nucleus, but no cell wall or chloroplast. This is only applicable in plants. And it only feeds on organic substances by made by other living things. So the next one is vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with a backbone. We know that. So mammals, they have fur, hair on their skin, they have an external ear and a mammary gland. Reptiles, they are, have thick, dry, scaly skins, usually four legs. Fish, they have wet scales, they have streamlined body shape, external fertilization, and they use gills to breathe in. Amphibians, they are smooth and they have a moist skin. They, of course, give out soft eggs. Uh, gills and lungs can leave land or water. They can breathe both conditions, and most have four legs. Birds, feathers, they have feathers. They have a constant internal body temperature, heart aches, and internal fertilization. So these are how they look. You should have known some of them already. So this is more of a recap if you get this. Arthropods. Arthropods, something new here. So it's organisms that do not have a backbone, or we call it invertebrates. So they have an exoskeleton in common, and jointed legs, and segmented body. So the one example would be the crustaceans. They have an exoskeleton, one pair of compound eyes, and they usually have 10 to 14 legs. Arachnids, they have a cephalothorax, which is just basically the same thing, it's part of our throat there in humans, and there are four pairs of legs. Myriapods, they are segmented body, 10 pairs of legs, one on two on each segment. And insects, they have three body segments, three pairs of jointed legs, one pair of antenna, and one or two pairs of wings. Okay, something like this. Just, you know, I think the key part here is to know how many legs they have. Okay, so something a bit... Uh, not a good start, but like, yeah, you do have to know how many legs they have. All right, classification of plants. This is a very famous question that they can ask in exam. So let's see. So we can classify plant kingdom into ferns and flowering plants. And then flowering plants, we have a non-flowering plant also, okay, which are ferns lah, basically. So ferns, they do not produce any flowers or seeds. They are... Plants with roots, stems, and feathery leaves, they are reproduced by spores. If flowering plants, they have roots, stems, and leaves, and they reproduce sexually, or sometimes asexually also, which they require a parent, and then the seeds are reproduced inside a ovary in the flower. Okay, then, important, monocotyledon and dicotyledon. So, you need to know at least two what they have and what uh, dicotyledon has. So, monocotyledon have one cotyledon, parallel veins, have a long narrow leaf, three flower plot, parts, and a scattered vascular bundle. While for dicot, dicot, we have two cotyledons, branching veins, broad leaves, four or five flower parts, and a ring vascular bundle. Alright, then lastly, we got viruses. Viruses, they are not part of any classification system. As you can see, that virus are not include. Why? Because it is not a living thing. It doesn't have a nucleus. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have a mitochondria. It doesn't have a ribosome. It only has a genetic material and then a protein code. Okay, so that's the reason virus is not actually a living thing, but it requires to live on a host, means like somebody. Okay, then it can grow and replicate. Okay. So that's it. in summary, just know whatever is in the mind map. The mind map is shown here. Just basically understand what are the characteristics, the Mrs. Grant, the concept and uses of classification system, like um, they need to use DNA to find the evolutionary relationships and the features of organism. We talk about the five kingdoms, the vertebrates, the arthropods, then the viruses in the end. Okay, so do familiarize with this first chapter. It isn't that heavy, but this is a, some, a start okay, to anything. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope to see you guys in the next chapter. Bye-bye.